the music. Come on. Say it, y'all. Worshiping. All of the days. You sing it too at home. All of the days of my life. Let's worship together. Come on, family. Say it. How be Come on, say it. He has done great things. Come on, our time is almost up, but let's worship, say it. He has done great things. So what are you going to do? Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Do me a favor. Will you begin to thank God for his presence even tonight? Come on. Will you begin to bless God even tonight? Who is like the Lord? Nobody. Come on. I will exalt thee. I will in your house, in your car, wherever you are, say, I will let you. Oh, Lord. Come on, will you do that for me? I will let You're with me because you're with me. I want to tell you wherever you are, God is with you because you're, you're with me. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. I will not what? I will not Hallelujah. I want to thank our worship and arts team under the leadership of Pastor Jonathan Nelson and Minister Tiffany Boone. We thank God for them leading us into the presence of God on tonight. I want to let somebody know right now that I feel the presence of God and I believe that it is pervasively meeting you wherever you are. I know that you're not in this room physically, but there is no distance in the spirit. And I want to tell you the same God that is with us in this place carries that same grace to wherever you are. And I want to thank you for those who have tuned in for being a part of this group therapy moment. And I would just like to take the point and privilege humbly to say on the behalf of our pastor, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, we are thankful that you are worshiping with us. Will you do me a favor, wherever you are, as you're watching, we're virtual now. 
I want you to do me a favor. I want you to, in the chat section, even now, I want you to begin to write thanks to Pastor Brian. Let him know how much you appreciate him. Pastor, we love you. We thank God for you. You're amazing. Thank you for the messages. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for what you're doing in the community. Come on right now. I want you to begin to write in the chat how appreciative you are for our leader. He is an amazing man of God currently. He is in Kentucky on the front lines, serving in our social issues. And I thank God for him, that God has given him a unique assignment that only he could carry out. And I thank God for his leadership and him being the shepherd over this house. New birth that's in the room. Can y'all just make some noise for our pastor? Hallelujah. And to all of our New Birth Nation family, we want to let you know that we love you guys. I'm giving you a virtual hug. I'm letting you know how grateful and appreciative we are. I can't wait to see your face. And when we release this, this uh, COVID-19, this pandemic, and we can see each other and pass the peace only like we can. So special shout out to you. Will you do me a favor? Will you do me a favor? Will you just take a moment to be an evangelist? I want you to do me this favor. I want you right now, I want you right now to share this message. I want you to share this moment. I want you to start a watch party because I believe that what God is getting ready to say in this hour is getting ready to speak to not only you, but to someone you know. I don't know about you, but I declare that someone not only needs a word tonight, but I declare they're gonna receive a word tonight. I thank God for you. Can we also thank God for this amazing band? We thank God for them. They go hard every week to our media team behind the cameras, to all of our staff pastors who are absolutely amazing. Hey, listen, family, I want to acknowledge and appreciate my wife and child. I want to acknowledge and appreciate my wife and child, Tiffany Celeste Lemons and Harley Monroe. I know that they're watching right now, and I just want to celebrate them. My wife and I celebrate this September 14 years of marriage. God is good. God is faithful. He's amazing. I said, please don't leave me, girl. Please. She stayed around. I thank God. I thank God for her. Now, listen, family and friends, I, I want to shift. I want to shift gears. I want to shift gears and get into the word of God tonight. Listen, um, if you've seen the son, you've seen the father. I want us to um, adjust our mind right now to, to settle in this moment to hear what it is that God wants to say to us. Through the leading of the Holy Spirit in the direction of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Bryant, we have been advised um, to stay in a top 10 mind frame that our pastor has begun a series entitled The Top Ten, that God wants you to be in the top ten of your field, that God wants you to be in the top ten of your class. Listen, I can't hear you, but I want to feel you tonight. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to say it out of your mouth. I want you to write it in the chat. I want you to say, yes, I will be in the top ten. I want you to do it even now. I believe that God is getting ready to do something special. And before we go into the word, I want to encourage you to partner with us in your faithful commitment by joining us on September 13th, 2020 for our demonstration Sunday that will all be taking place virtually. That will be the day that we collectively tithe. And I'm encouraging all of those who are not tithers yet to join the team of the tithing community so that we can watch God open up the windows of blessings that he has in store for you. Family and friends, I want us to go tonight to the book of Genesis. I want us to go tonight to the book of Genesis, and I'm going to be reading from Genesis chapter 15. I'm going to be reading from Genesis chapter 15. And we're going to start our reading tonight at verse number 8. And the Bible reads, and he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two down the middle. And he placed each piece opposite the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. For a subject tonight, family and friends, and all the visitors that are watching that are potentially joining even tonight, 
I want to speak from the subject, something has to change. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Something has to change. Um, our pastor and Reverend Al Sharpton will lead the effort to commemorate the March on Washington this weekend. And I consider the temperature of our country, and as I reflect on it, I am reminded that in 1963, a 17-minute political address through a Baptist preacher inspired a belief that people can dream past where their feet are presently planted. With great opposition of onlookers, Dr. Martin Luther King surmised that, I believe, Hum humility should not disqualify you from being treated equal. However, when we do the math of our society, I see less equality and more division. As a Christian, I have adopted the thought that God treats all of his children equal. In Romans chapter 8, verse 17, the Bible lets us know that if we are his children, then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, that we inherit and continue the legacy of our predecessor, that God does not deal family in division, but he specializes in multiplication. Therefore, if my father has many mansions, how can I not believe that he doesn't have more space for me? That if my father has many mansions, can't I believe from God more than a one-bedroom apartment. That if my father has the cattle on the thousand hills and all belongs to him, then why should I live substandard to his word? Dr. Martin Luther King's remarks resound in my spirit for some believer tonight. He says that we have come to the capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote of the magnificent words of this constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. Dr. King then went on to say, America has given us a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. And we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is insufficient and bankrupt. I got a question for you, family and friends. Where is the justice? When Eric Gardner breaks up a fight and dies, where is the justice? When Tamir Rice can't play in the park, where is the justice? When Philando Castile can't drive his girlfriend home, where is the justice? Can I ask you a question? Is there any justice? When Breonna Taylor can't sleep peacefully in her own bed, when George Floyd can't get the knee off of his neck. I got a question for you. Where is the justice? That three little boys in Wisconsin have to watch their father shot in the back seven times. Where is the justice? And Dr. King said, we refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity. So we have come to cash this check. People of God, if you're listening to me tonight, I want you to stay tuned. I believe that it is an opportune time for you to cash in on everything that God has for you. That if God has brought you to this point, that he has not brought you here to leave you, that he has not brought you here just so that you can make it and occupy space, but God has brought you here that you would dominate, lend to the borrower, and be fruitful. Can I share something with you tonight? That God's perfect will for your life is so that you can prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That his perfect will for your life is that you would live above only and not beneath that you would live your days in pleasure that you would leave an inheritance for your children's children because if I am an heir of God and joint heir with Christ then why can't I ask God to have better living conditions why can't I ask God to live more comfortably to support my family I just heard somebody say to their computer I'm tired of being overworked Worked and underpaid, educated and unemployed, having an executive level mind working at an entry level position profiled while I'm wearing a hoodie in 
in my driving well car, disregarded because of my criminal record, not having sufficient resources for my child's education. Can I share something with you tonight that being content Tent doesn't mean you have to be complacent. Say that again one more time. This is what you say. I'm going to say that one more time. I said being content does not mean that you have to be complacent because contentment is being thankful for where you are, whether abound or abase. Mm -hmm. Complacency is when you have settled into your own strength and you've said, God, this is the best that you have and I don't think there's anything else good to come. I need to tell somebody right now, don't limit God. Would you just do me a favor? Would you just touch yourself? Take your hands off your phone, off your computer, and just say, don't limit God. Whatever you do, do not limit God. As we look, as we look, family and friends, at Abraham tonight, he is content in Genesis chapter 13 and verse number 2. And the Bible lets us know that Abraham, watch it. The Bible lets us know that Abraham, watch it. The Bible lets us know that Abraham was rich in cattle. He was rich in silver and gold. In other words, he's already doing well for himself but something within him longs for the vault of opportunity here's the takeaway I need us to have tonight number one God is presenting you with an opportunity I wish y'all heard me right now I said that God is presenting you with an opportunity William Ward said in the book the tongue of fire that opportunities are like sunrises if you wait too long you'll miss them this is your opportunity family and friends to be a voice to the voiceless. This is your opportunity, family and friends, and your opportunity to sharpen a skill. This is your opportunity while you're at the house uh, nine times, nine, nine out of ten times of the week. This is your opportunity to do something different. So when we find Abraham in chapter 15, Abraham, watch it here, he is thankful for what he has. He is content, but he is not complacent. We know this because of the discussion that he is having with God about the rest of his promise. Can I tell somebody virtually right right now? I need to tell you this. You ought to be thankful for what you have. I don't want you to miss that right there. I said you ought to be thankful for what you have. You ought to say, God, I thank you for the food that's on the table. I thank you for the clothes that's on my back. I thank you for the money that is coming in. But God, while I'm thanking you for what I have, can we just have a small conversation about the rest rest of my promise. And is there anybody that's listening to me right now that can say, God, you've been good to me, but I want to thank you for what I have, but I'm also thanking you for the rest. I want to tell you, God, that you've been good, but I also believe that you have more for me. Is there anybody that's listening right now that believes that God has more for you, that there are more opportunities for you, that your purpose is not fully manifested, and you're saying, God, I want to talk to you about the rest of what you have for my life. Can I tell you that the, this year has been a very new, unique year. It's been one of those years where I just said to myself, God, how could this have happened to me? But you know what God told me? God said, don't worry about what happened from January to July. He says, because I'm going to show you that your ladder will be greater than your former. I wish somebody would hear me right now. God says to Abraham, he says, Abraham, I need you to relax. I need you to relax. He says, you have been quarantined to too long. I, I, I'm talking to somebody right now because your faith is dwindling because you have been quarantined too long and now you're thinking that God can't make a way out of no way but I came to tell that devil no weapon shot out rope okay shall be able to prosper against you. Can I just tell somebody right now that God says I need you right now to get out of what you're in. Can I just tell somebody that's what happened with Abraham and the conversation that he had with God when Abraham start talking to God. God says, I know what you're in, but can I tell you, I can get you out of it. And I'm talking to somebody right now that's looking at the house they're in right now, looking at the car that they're in right now, looking at the job that they're at right now. God said, don't worry, you're just quarantined, but I'm about to get you out. 
I hear you. I hear you, Internet. God says to Abraham, he says, he says to Abraham, he says, I need you to think bigger. <laughs> he says, Abraham, I know you've been quarantined, but, but he says, I need you to dream bigger. Hmm. Uh -huh. Because God's thought life for you is so big that it will cause you to crucify your complacency. Can I say that one more time? I'm telling you that when God gives you an idea... It ought to be so big that it causes you to crucify your complacency. Uh, yeah, yeah. When, uh, when, when God spoke to Abraham, this is what he told his joker. He says, look up. Oh, God. He says, he says count them stars, man. Uh, he says, and if you can count them, so shall your seed be. Jonathan, I'm tired of having virtual church right now. I just want to have church with this camera. I, 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 I know right now somebody's standing on their feet right now. God told me to tell somebody, look up. Hmm. God told me to tell somebody, check where you are, but then check where you're not. And he says, wherever you're not, believe faith that I can do it for you. Okay. Okay. He says, Abraham, he says, I'll bless your offspring. Abraham doesn't know how it's going to happen. But he does know who told him. <laughs> and there are moments in this journey that you have to thank God for the who over the how. Did y'all hear what I just said? That you have to thank God for the who over the how. That the who told me doesn't override. Watch this here. See, because sometimes we let the how interrupt the who. <laughs> so we start seeing how God can you do it. But God says, God says, I am not a God of insufficiency. He says, I am the God that is all sufficient. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I said, God is working in your favor in such a way that he can supply all your needs According to his riches and glory, God is saying right now, I can supply your social needs, your spiritual needs, your financial needs, your emotional needs. Can I tell you who my God is? My God is the God of the universe. Can I tell you who my God is? He sits high and looks low. Can I tell you who my God is? Heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. And can I tell you who my God is? He is the God of all flesh and there is nothing too hard for my God. Would you do me a favor? Just fetch the space bar. And that was your neighbor. And just tell it nothing is too hard for my God. And when I am an heir with God, nothing is too hard for me. Can I tell you? I need you to hear me. If it's not hard for God, it won't be hard for you. Let me talk to this camera. Let me say it again. I said that if it's not hard, for God, it won't be hard for you. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Here is the prophetic word that God is adding into your spirit and into your Rolodex of vocabulary while you're facing what you're facing. The word is more. Hmm. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it. Because what you are up against, you feel like that you're less than. Mm. But God says, I've got more than that. Uh, somebody just caught it by faith. Can I just tell you that there is more for you? More square footage for you. More connections for you. More business ideas for you. More money in your bank account. More joy for your family. For those who don't believe it, continue to be virtually quiet. But for those who do receive it, I need you to put your earphones up turn up your value and say lord i receive my more lord i receive my favor lord i receive this anointing the same grace that is on you now dispensates itself on me i receive more uh, can i tell you something you're one book away from a publishing deal one interview away from a new tax bracket one proposal away from a successful entrepreneurship. One call away from an open door. One song away from a national hit record. One report away from total healing. One blink away from clear vision. One reference away from the scholarship that you've been looking for. And one praise away from a miracle. Can I share something with you? Get out from where you are. 
God has more for you. Huh. God presents Abraham an opportunity in Genesis chapter 15, verse number 3. And what he presents him is bigger than cash. Huh. What he presents him is because Abraham is concerned about his son. See, some people's greatest desire is for something. But then there is a remnant whose desire is to be a blessing to someone. Hmm. Today, I'm praying that God would give you the compassion and conviction. Not to just receive the blessing of something. But you would learn how to be a blessing to someone. That the opportunities that you pray happen in your life. That you would learn how to be the platform so someone else can have in their life. Abraham wanted to pass his blessings down to his son. I feel, in the, I feel the leading of the Holy Spirit right now. I want you to write this down in your virtual community. Everything that God has for me. Mm -hmm. Everything that God has for me. I pass it down. I want, you to flood our, I want you to flood our chat right now. I pass it down. I pass it down. Favor, I pass it down. Peace, I pass it down. Resource, I pass it down. Higher income, I pass it down. Greater health, I pass it down. I don't know what it is that you need, but whatever you need God to do for you, ask God to pass it down. If I'm blessed in the city, you blessed in the city. If I'm blessed in the field, you're blessed in the field. God says to Abraham, if this is what you want, show me what you're willing to do. Hmm. Can I ask you a question? Just a simple question. What are you willing to sacrifice to see God do the supernatural in your life? What are you willing to sacrifice for God to move on your behalf? See, everyone wants the greatness of success. But they don't really want the burden of sacrifice. See, the greatness is to get saved. The, sac the sacrifice is to live sanctified. And everybody, everybody wants the greatness of success. But they don't want to pay the price. Endure the cost. Of the sacrifice, the Bible says in Isaiah uh, chapter 1, verse 19, that if you be willing and obedient, that's when you'll eat the good of the land. When God presents you an opportunity, I want you to hear it, obey it. I said when God presents you an opportunity, obey it. I need to tell somebody, God knows what you want. But he also wants to know what you're willing to sacrifice. In Genesis chapter 15, verse number 9, God gives Abraham specific instructions on what to sacrifice. God says to him, yo, uh, do me a favor, bro. He says, uh, get me a three-year-old uh, heifer, um, a three-year-old goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. If you inspect what they all have in common, you will note that they are not fully mature and developed. In other words, God wants him to disconnect himself from immature people. Because in this season, you can't give people time to grow up around you. You need people who are mentally competent to handle your goals, visions, and aspirations. Can I tell you, some people live in the past because they don't know how to work on their future. So they bring up how you used to act and where you used to go and what you used to do and how you used to hang out because they're stuck in their glory days because they don't know how God wants to move with them and through them in this newness of life. In this season, they either grow up with you or they get to stepping. Listen, listen. You, you, got, you, got, you got options right now. You're either going to grow up or you're going to get out this house. You're either going to grow up or you're not going to work here anymore. Either you're going to grow up or I'm not going to stay with you because I can't live single, sleeping with.
with you when you know, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I wish you could hear me. Hey, Abraham, Abraham, you know, you know, we've been having, we've been having virtual church for 20 minutes. Can I just have this moment with you? Can I just have this moment with you? Abraham sacrificed and what he sacrificed, he sacrificed pigeons. He sacrifices rams. He sacrifices doves. He sacrifices goats and heifers. The sacrifice establishes a covenant. It's a, it's a promissory note between him and God. In Hebraic custom, when a covenant is established, your sacrifice is by fire. In particular, to this sacrifice, Abram was not only to burn the sacrifice, but he was to cut the sacrifice. This is important because if the sacrifice is only burned, it could possibly live through the burn. But if the sacrifice is cut, then there is no possible way the sacrifice would survive. I need to tell somebody. There are some people who have burned you and you let them back in. You knew they weren't right. You knew they had bad character. But even though they kept burning you, you let them back in. And who can receive this right now? This is the last time you get burned. Can I tell you something? As I move on into the rest of this year, I am not dealing with people who smile in my face trying to burn me. Can I just talk to somebody right now? This is your last time you've been burned. God instructed me to tell you it's time not only to put it on the fire, but it's also time to get your scissors because it is time to cut it. Can I just say that again? I said cut it. I said it's time to cut it. Don't allow them to stress you out. Don't allow them to break your heart. Don't allow them to agitate your spirit. I can forgive you, but I don't have to tolerate you. I am not only burning the relationship, I'm cutting it too. From this moment forward, I'm cutting all communications. I'm not sending a memo, a fax, a text. I'm not DMing you. You will realize that we don't talk anymore after three months of not having any engagement with me. I don't have any hard feelings, but where God is taking me can't handle this drama. When I have destiny in mind, drama is not a part of the agenda. And I just came to tell somebody it's time to cut it. God is saying, Abraham, I know what you want. But what are you willing to do? You see this opportunity. But how willing are you to be obedient? When you make a sacrifice to God, the thing you gain is always greater than the thing you give up. His greatness always comes with a price. Abraham sacrifices because he believes what's to come. His son. He sacrifices a heifer. Sacrifices a heifer. A heifer, family and friends, symbolizes poor stewardship. A heifer is a young female cow that is not born a calf. She has not birthed anything. Here's what's interesting. The heifer can do it. The heifer could do it. But that heifer has not done it. And God is challenging him to sacrifice in the areas of his own life where he pushes off everything for tomorrow that he could do today. Mm. And I need to talk to somebody because let's be honest, some of us keep pushing off stuff that we need to do today. And God is saying, you got to learn how to sacrifice poor stewardship. You keep on talking about, I'll get saved tomorrow. I'll join the church tomorrow. I'll put in the application later. I'll I'll work out starting Monday. I'll go back to school next semester. I'll start tithing if I get this additional job. I'll stop sleeping with them after this last time. And God is saying, I want you to stop it now and give up the poor stewardship. Abraham sacrifices that heifer. Hmm. But then he also sacrifices a female goat. Female goat symbolizes alternative satisfaction. Goats are ruminants, meaning they have more than one stomach. It takes more to fill them up. And I need to let somebody know that you've been allowing certain people and entities and things and spirits eat up your joy. Eat up your finances. Eat up your peace. 
Because you are working so hard to try to satisfy them, you're losing your true authenticity with God. And God says, you're looking for them to satisfy you. When my word declares in Psalms 91 verse 6, with long life, I will satisfy you. Maybe the reason why you're really not internally happy is because you keep on looking for flowers and perfume. You you keep on looking for shoes and bags. And God says, I gave that to you. I allowed you to have it, but you see how long that lasted. You thought the stimulus was going to make you joyful, but did you realize that it's not that that satisfies you? It is me who satisfies you. Abraham sacrifices he sac he sacrifices a heifer he sacrifices a goat then he sacrificed this ram the ram symbolizes total surrender rams are uncastrated male sheep and when he cuts it at the altar it is now a sacrifice when an animal friends is castrated it is done in order to reduce aggression and improve their desire to surrender. The uncastrated animal says, I'm not giving money to the church. The castrated animal says, I can't wait to give to the church because I know what God can do. Me giving to the church is not a cut of my check. Me giving to the church is a covenant with my check. However, he get that ram. And I want to ask you a question right now. What do you need to cut? What private things that no one else can see that you need, because you know what? I'm so tired of this form of godliness. I, I don't want, you know what? I don't want the form of godliness. You know what? We are professionals at the form of godliness. Do you know what I want? I want the power. I want the power that we can look at somebody and say, in the name of Jesus, you are here. I don't want, I don't want just the form. I want the function. It is. He said, you got to, he said, to get that, you're going to have to cut that private stuff. That person has not called you and won't call you about the blessing that's waiting for you until you learn how to cut the thing that God is saying you need to cut that nobody else knows about but you and God. Talk lemons. Okay, 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 okay. However, um, when he cut the birds, he didn't cut all this other stuff. Now he's cutting them. Now, he, now he's at the birds. But interestingly enough, Pastor, he doesn't cut those birds. Okay. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't cut those birds because those birds symbolize stability even though they were small. The birds symbolize substantiality even though they were small. Scholars suggest that birds were not cut in two because they were too small. But even though they were small, they were still significant. Can I tell you something about your offering? That sometimes when you sacrifice a small offering, you say, my offering isn't significant. But can I tell you something? Even though it's small, it is significant. Can I share something with you? You may have something that seems minimal to you, but it is always major to God. And I don't know what it is that you sow in your offering and you sow in your tithes, but whether it is $5, whether it is $20, whether it is $100 or $1,000, whatever you give, God says, it is not, it is not that I'm looking for your amount. I'm looking for your heart. Okay. Um, can I tell you, God will always make sure that your sacrificial offering is always beneficial in your life. Abraham makes a sacrifice. And when he makes the sacrifice, watch what happens. Vultures show up. Isn't it crazy that I finally get to the place where I'm willing to, to take advantage of the opportunity. I'm willing 
to be obedient with his instructions. But, but isn't it strange that as soon as I position myself with God, that's when the vultures show up? As soon as I'm in the place where I'm saying, God, I want to be obedient, I want to be used, that's when the vultures show up? I'm talking to somebody right now. I don't know. I don't know who you are. You're trying to have the victory, but you know you're dealing with vultures. Vultures trying to steal your peace, trying to steal your joy, trying to, trying to steal your family, trying to come against your marriage, trying to work against your mind. You got vultures. And it's taking you a long time just to get to this point. And you're trying to ask God, 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 how, how do I do all of this and get here and now have to deal with that? Can I tell you, it's time to lay hands on them vultures. Can I tell you, when God presents you an opportunity, I need you to be obedient to it. But then on sight, I need you to lay hands on it. Can I tell you, vultures are not people. Vultures are in high places. Can I tell you what you're dealing with? You're dealing with a spiritual wickedness in a high place. God says, this ain't even about people. This about that thing in high places. And he says, what I need you to do, I need you to lay hands on it. He says, don't let nothing steal your sacrifice. If you got to stumble through it, struggle through it, stutter through it, it doesn't matter. You the one for the job and you keep on doing what you're doing. Why? Because ain't no vulture going to take what God has for you. I came to tell you, get your hands up. Get your hands up and tell that devil, you getting up out of my house. My baby won't be smoking any more weed. We, we will get a job. You need to tell that vulture, you got to run up on out of here. You got the wrong one today. I came to tell Satan, not today, not today, not today. Can I tell you something? Vultures only show up when they think something is dead. Can I, can I tell you what the news can I tell you what the news reporter said from the Washington Post about, about Blake? The news reporter said that the family told him that he is still alive. He is just in critical condition. Can I, can I tell you something? Too many people are announcing your committal. And the reality is, baby, don't say ashes to ashes and dust to dust to me. I'm just in critical condition, but I got a family. <laughs> I got a family that's praying on my behalf, and they're fighting the vultures away. I wish I, wish I had somebody right now. I wish, I wish I had somebody right now. I feel you right. I can't hear you, but I can feel you in the spirit. I need you to get your hands up and say, get up out of here. I bind it in the name of Jesus. You are not going to come against my children against my grandchildren I bind it I've sacrificed too much to let you come up in here and steal what God has for my baby the devil is a liar can I tell you something he drove it away can I tell you right now you need to have drive you got too much drive in you you have too many dreams too much hope too much faith too much potential too much talent too much ability too much focus, too much prayer, too much favor. I need to tell you, get your drive back. Get your, get your drive back. Don't let that devil steal what he has for you. Get your drive back. Get your drive back. Get your drive back. Would you just tell yourself, get my drive back. Get my drive back. I come against every crooked government system. I come against every crooked mayor. I come against every crooked city official. And I bind you in the name of Jesus. I pray for equality over our nation I pray for equality in our schools I pray against this digital divide and I come against it right now I say in the name of Jesus I got too much drive to let you steal it from me to steal it from my family steal it from my home you can't have it no no you can't have it my baby won't be on drugs my husband won't divorce me my family will get back who am I talking to the scholarship is theirs who oh. God, I got drive. I got drive. I got, I got, I got drive. I got, I got, I got drive. You know what other people they, they, they have, they have, they have distinguish. 
so their distinguished takes them places. And then when you get in the room, they ask you a question, how did you get here? Tell them it was nothing but my sacrifice and my drive. Can I tell you where I'm from? I am from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Can I tell you, when you ask the question, who are they? The response has to be, I don't know. Can I tell you, it was the sacrifice of the seed. Because when you lay before God, God will lift you before man. You didn't hear what I just said. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I tell you that no matter who you are, that no matter where you are, do not lose your drive. Right now, God is asking you to make the sacrifice for your own success. Your sacrifice, I'm telling you, hear me as a man of God, is connected to your sanctification. The Lord says, he says, I'll do something amazing in your life tomorrow. That's what he says. He says, but watch what I'll do it. He says, I'll do it once you've sanctified yourself. I am calling for you to humble your heart and say, God, I'm ready to make the sacrifice. When I got saved and gave my life to Jesus, I didn't even know how to be saved right. So I started breaking all the CDs. I thought that's what I was supposed to do, just break them. We can't be listening to this. I, I had all these religious rules and thoughts. And you know what God told me, man? Ain't, that, ain't, that ain't it. God said to me, I need you to give me your heart. I need you to be willing. I need you to be obedient. I need you to crucify your flesh. You know how hard it was for Abraham to give up those things? But when he gave it up, he got it all. I'm going to tell you something. You can't beat God giving. No matter how hard you try. Will you hear this little sweaty guy right now? And would you let him enter into your space? And will you allow me to offer Christ to you? I don't serve Jesus to be seen. I serve Jesus because I know how he saved me. And when he saved me for me, I said, God, I got to sacrifice. I ask you right now, don't just make Jesus your savior. Make Jesus your Lord. Let him have authority over what you have and let him have authority over who you are. Because what he has for you is bigger than anything you know. I got to get out of here. But before I get out of here, can I tell you, God wants to change it. Something has to change. What is it, Pastor? You. God says, your greatest level of success is connected to you. Let me prove it to you. Because when God start seeing the sacrifice of Abraham in Genesis 17, he changed his name. Can I tell you, God wants to change your name. He wants to change your name from Abraham to Abraham. Something has to change. And where do we start? We start with me. Can I tell you, God wants to put MDiv on your name. God wants to put MD on your name. God wants to put doctor on your name. God wants to put Mrs. on your name. God wants to put recipient of blank on your name. I don't know what God is about to add to your name, but I do know that God wants to add to your name. Jesus wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask, dream, think, or even imagine. 
I know what he wants to do with your name. But he starts doing it when you learn how to say his name. Jesus. <laughs> something, something happens when I call. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Something. When I call you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Listen, right now, we're in a season of stewardship, talking about making sacrifices. Family, I want you to make the sacrifice right now. I want you to get a $50 seed at a minimum. I want you to get a seed, $50. And I want you to do me a favor. I want you to make that sacrifice. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I can do more than 50. I feel led to sow 500. I feel led to sow 250. I, I want you to be obedient to what God is telling you. Because what God tells you, he may not be telling me. And I don't want you to be offended about this moment. Because if God has not given it to you, you don't have to have condemnation about it. But I want you to walk in faith. God, what is it that you're purposing me to do to be a part of this moment? I want you to get that seed. And I want you to text NBGIVE to 77977. And tonight I want you to sow a seed that says, God, I'm willing to make the sacrifice to see you show up in my life in a special way. Tonight God is speaking to you. Tonight, God is showing you how your sacrifice is getting ready to change some things in your life. I'm honored that you stayed tuned and worshiped with me on the behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Bryan, who will be in worship on Sunday, who will be in worship on Tuesday. I want to tell you, thank you for worshiping with us. We honor and we bless God for you. And I want you to know that our pastor is praying for you. He is thinking of you and he loves you. Our staff is rooting for you. Our pastoral team is on their knees concerning what God has for your life. If you don't have a church home, make this one in. We are a cool church for people in critical condition. And we're saying, don't give up now. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. Can I pray with you as we go? I have just a few more seconds. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you that not only does something have to change, but we are thankful for what is changing. And we say tonight, God, we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. This is our prayer. We'll see you soon, new birth. God bless. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
minutes. But I just want to give a call on him. 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 If you're still online right now, I just want you to call on. Call on him. Call on him. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Make ways in my life. Made ways in my life, oh, open doors in my life. Oh.